morning, everyone, and welcome to our service of worship. The big announcement today is that it, it is Peter and Debbie's 40th anniversary. So happy anniversary to them. <laughs> the only other thing I would like to mention is today is our annual general meeting, and you're, of course, everyone is welcome. It, it's just a review of the past year, so it'll probably, probably be short and sweet. Yeah. Now let's prepare our minds and hearts for worship. today and every day. Synchronize each of our heartbeats with yours. Align all of our desires with yours so that we may experience the joy of fulfillment. Let us spend our lives delighting in what you accomplish here and out in our communities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is 259. Come Christians, join to sing. Joyful, 
Pray continually. Give thanks in every circumstance, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not, Do not suppress the spirit. Do not despise prophetic speech. Test everything and retain what is good. Draw back from evil and interference from evil. And God himself, the God of peace, will make you holy in every way, and will keep your spirit, soul, and body complete and faultless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is trustworthy. He will do these things. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Our hymn remains seated, number 365, Father, Lead Me Day by Day. Thank you.
Well, the season of the birth of Christ is here and gone, just like that. Yet I would hope that we've entered this new year with the same excitement as we felt during the season of peace and joy. Reading the Christmas story through the scriptures is always captivating, and we are once again reminded to carry the feeling of Christmas with us throughout every day of this year. Having God with us through Jesus Christ is really our reason for living, and it brings us joy. It brings us hope, peace, and love. Last week, we heard about Epiphany and how the three wise men turned from King Herod, who was an evil man, to a new king, a different king, a good king, a Messiah, our Messiah, who came to save the world. They saw him, and the bright light of the star led them directly to him. They turned their lives around, turning from evil to good. They found Jesus Christ. It's so true that when we really pay attention to scripture, it meets us where we are, and then leads us to the feet of Jesus. We can change our ways in a minute. We can always experience a new beginning when we turn to face Jesus and when we decide to go deeper and deeper into our relationship with him. When we read through the New Testament, we learn that the world began to see the work of God in the ordinary lives of people as they were drawn to him. We often read of humble type people having encounters with him, people who had nothing. Some were not always good, some had sinned, and yet they turned to follow him. And just like them, Jesus welcomes all of us. He is, his light becomes our light to shine on others. Because as we come closer to him, we take on his radiance, because we are his people. This week, the two scriptures that led my way to this message was James 1, 1 to 10 that I just read. And then Isaiah 60, verse 3. It always amazes me how scriptures can clarify the way. In some scriptures, words are kind of mint, and some sound really confusing. And we have to read them over and over again with a very open mind and a very open heart to understand. Well, I guess except for Revelations, and that's always a challenge for all of us, because that's a whole other story. In James, we read where he, a servant of God, reaffirms for us how we can get through life's troubles and temptations and become more godlike. He tells us to be happy, to grow in the Lord. We become stronger through everything we face, no matter how difficult. We are told to go to God boldly, putting things out there, knowing, knowing that he never turns away from us. The one thing that is for sure is when we ask God for something, anything, we better not doubt that we will receive an answer. The doubt will not do us any favors at all. Asking God for answers with a strong faith will get us answers. He expects us to live by faith. With assurance in God that he provides all that we need, we can move on as his people, shining our Christ's light towards others. Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 3 reads, Arise, my people, let your light shine for all the nations to see, for the glory of the Lord is streaming from you. Darkness as black as night shall cover all the peoples of the earth, but the glory of the Lord will shine from you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see the glory of the Lord upon you. <coughs> it's us. It's all of us that the Lord is talking about. We are the ones who will shine the light of God on anyone we come in contact with. We will rejuvenate others. And we will help them see the light. People from everywhere will come to us checking out our light. And, see, and they can see through us what God has done. We're led by the light just as the wise men were on their path <coughs> to find the baby Jesus. 
Even things embrace the brightness of this new age that is meant for us. And this is the most exciting challenge we can have, bringing others to God, allowing others to see God through us. We definitely have our work cut out for us, but we all know that it's quite doable. A, ta a tad overwhelming at times, but doable. And when we relive our Christmas story, it always reminds us of our mission here on earth. God has perfect timing, whether we realize it or not. The world tends to stop on Christmas Day. It stops, reminding us of the peace brought to us through this baby in the manger. Again and again, we relive our Christian history. As we live on in this new light of God, and we continue to pass it along to others, we will see Christ coming again. Not that we know when, because we're not supposed to, but we sure know that it will happen, and that's what keeps us excited. As Isaiah said in chapter 60, verse 4, so lift up your eyes and see, says the prophet. These words are as applicable to the second coming of Jesus as they were to the first. <clears throat> Jesus said, what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch, keep a sharp lookout, for you do not know when I will come, at evening, at midnight, early dawn, or late daybreak. Don't let me find you sleeping. Watch for my return. This is my message to you and to everyone else. He continued to preach, turn from sin, and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. We know that the light is ultimately Jesus Christ. He proclaimed himself to be the light of the world. And it's important to note that he called his followers, all of us, the light of the world. Our job is to reflect his light. We have the immense pleasure of bringing others to know what it's like to be a follower of Jesus Christ. God wants to be known worldwide, and he keeps reaching out, and he wants us to boldly approach him with absolutely anything at all. There is always something miraculous when God is at work. There's no denying the joy we feel when we work and do things on his behalf. Yes, this world can bring us down. Yes, it's not always easy, far from it. But knowing our beliefs, our hopes, attitudes, and actions are all aimed towards pleasing God we cannot go wrong. We are being good and we are being faithful servants. Let every voice acclaim his name, the grateful chorus swell. From paradise to earth he came, that we with him might dwell. Amen. Our hymn number 460, I love to tell the story. <laughs> Brooke's going to sing for us here. <laughs>
way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let us do good things for Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly and loving Father, thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to us to set the example of good living. Remind us of this as we give our offerings to this church to be used to bring glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. today. Although it is still morning, there are so many good things that have come our way. We have the joy of shelter, the joy of heat, the joy of clean water coming out of our taps, and the joy of food on our tables. We thank you for friends who understand us, and the joy of meeting new friends. Thank you that we are here in church body and spirit, and thank you for the joy of worshiping you, our creator, and we thank you for loving us. 
In the midst of joys, in all, in all honesty, we admit that we come with some fears. Some of us have fears about new beginnings, perhaps new life circumstances, new relationships, or new jobs. We don't know how we'll do or how we'll feel. We are nervous at times and want things to go well in our circumstances at this time. There are fears about health, aches and pains that won't go away, symptoms that are unexplained, treatments that we hope will be effective. <coughs> there are some of us that have financial fears. Can we pay our bills? Can we make donations? Have we saved enough? Have we saved at all? And then there is the fear of loneliness that strikes us all at some point. We fear that we won't find people to love or that we'll lose the people we do love. We pray for people who have lost a family member or friend. We ask that you comfort John as he mourns the loss of his sister Marie. Help us be a comfort, help us be a comfort to him as well as others. God of hope, thank you that you are with us in all our fears and that you bring joy even in the midst of them. Thank you for your faithfulness through time, for the ways you have been there for us in the past and are with us now. And we know that nothing can separate us from your love. Help us this week to have compassion for those who are afraid, for those who are escaping bombs and bullets, for those who face governments that are oppressive, and for those who cannot worship openly and they must meet in secret. In our own community, there are people who live with the fear of violence, who have no home, and who are cold, living in tents. Help them to see us to be people of refuge, who offer help and support, and who will go the extra mile when we see people in need. Forgive us for the times we have been too wrapped up in our own fears and joys to truly see our neighbor. Help us this week to embrace joyful living, being mindful of the gift of each day, remembering our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives in us and through us. In his name we pray. Amen. And our last hymn, 469, you leave this week. <coughs> Thank you. 
humbly give thanks whatever happens for this is what God in Christ wills for us. Amen. Amen.